All right. Are we ready for the word of God today? All right. Let's get into the word quickly. Let's get into the word quickly. So today I've been talking, we've been talking a lot about the guidance of the Holy Spirit. We're talking about the guidance of the Holy Spirit. So today we're going to still talk about the guidance of the Holy Spirit. And so why is it important to know the guidance of the Holy Spirit? Let's turn our Bibles to Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5. Verse 5. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5, it says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he shall what? Direct your part. It's amazing. You know, sometimes you read the scriptures and you're just so challenged about how God presents his thoughts. He said, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. We, meaning this, you cannot really go for spiritual guidance if you're not trusting in God. He said, trust not with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. And this is a challenge. The challenge, why, this is the reason why a lot of people struggle with guidance. A lot of people struggle with guidance because they lean on what? On their own understanding. And let me show you. Um, let, let me get maybe two. Can I get two guys on the choir to come? Maybe the two of you can come. Maybe, maybe, oh, maybe the two protocol can come, yeah? The two of you can come. You, you need to take off the mask so that, yeah. That will help us in a better way. So this way it is. This guy, this guy is feeling. This guy is, look, this guy doesn't look like, he looks very logical. This guy looks, yeah, like feeling. Someone like feels a lot, like very, yeah. This guy is feeling. This guy, he's reasoning. This is a spirit. Watch this now. The voice, the language of the body is feelings. The way the body communicates to you that he feels. So, how do you know you're hungry? You feel it. How do you know you're thirsty? You feel it. How do you know you're in pain? You feel it. The language of the body is what? No, you have to do that. It's what? Yeah. The language of the, of the soul or the mind is reasoning. So, the mind understands things by thinking about it. Now, I'm the spirit. The language of the spirit is revelation. The way God designs it to be is that the spirit will use both the reasoning and what? Will use everything and pull them along. You pull them along. But the thing is this. This is the challenge. The challenge is this. When you're not spiritually developed, you know what happens to you? Your feelings dominate over you. And your feeling begins to drag your spirit anywhere it wants to go. Instead of your spirit dragging your feeling, so... Your spirit wants to pray. Your spirit drags your feeling to pray. What happens is that your feeling does not want to pray. It wants to watch television. Your feeling drags what? Your spirit to do that. So what happens is this. There's a lot of people that what I call feeling ruled. They, they live according to their feelings. But that's not what they want. God really hopes that. So, why you have people that are feeling-based, you have people that are what? Reason-based. Everything is very logical. So, you, you have people that are feeling-based. You'd be like, oh my God, you know, what do you like about that girl? Oh my God, didn't you see? It's how they feel. It's how she makes me feel. I just showed you Sam right now. He said, oh, Sam is the will of God. He's tall, he's dark and handsome. He was a demon inside, you don't know. Because it's how you feel. But there's people that reason that is exactly how you think. So you look at all the paperwork. All the paperwork looks so well. So it's exactly how you feel. But what God wants is this. So the language of the body is what? Is feeling. The language of the soul is what? Reasoning. The language of the spirit is revelation. And God is one thing to make sure that it's revelation that takes the first place and everything aligns revelation. So he says to us, thank you very much, bring my small chair, please. He says, so he says to us, see what he says to us. He says to us, what does he say? He says, he says this, he says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean on what? On your own understanding. What does he say? In all your ways do what? Watch this now, watch this now. He says, lean on what? No, I don't like the way you're talking. I know you're ringing today, but why are we, you know? <laughs> Praise the Lord. You have to receive the word with faith and fire, not the way you're saying it. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Good. 
He says, lean not on your own what? Good. Did he say don't use your understanding? Don't what? Christians, balance is very key. Some Christians even ask God, what should I wear? That's why God gave you a brain. So, what some Christians do is that they don't use the understanding. It is a don't use the understanding. Religion says, don't think. No, you should think. But what it says to you is this, do not lean. Lean means, don't put your total weight on your understanding. I'll give an example. If this is understanding, this chair is understanding. God says, you can use this chair to assist you to do things. You can use this chair to do a lot of things. You can put some things on this chair. But this is what you don't want to do. Let me get someone to help me right now. What can I really get here? Uh, I'm looking for someone to get here. Mm, any volunteer here? Why are you looking at me that way? Reading glasses, you look at me like, please don't call me. <laughs> you want to come? Choose one neighbor. The one on the right. Okay, yeah. She chose you. I didn't call you. She chose you. Come, 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 come. Yeah, she chose you. She loves you. That's why she did. Can you imagine? She loves you so much, she chose you. What's your name? Ariadne. Ariadne. So, Ariadne, all I want to do is sit on this chair. <laughs> it's too small. What? It's too small. It's too small. But this is what God says. Who gave you understanding? You or God? God? The person that designed understanding looks at you and says, be careful. Your understanding does not have the capacity for you to put to lean on. He says, what does that mean? You can use your understanding, but to try to put your whole life's weight. Don't say it, please. You know, <laughs> to try to put your whole life's weight on understanding is dangerous. Sit now. Sit. Don't worry. Sit, 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 sit. Sit with faith. Sit with faith. <laughs> it's still difficult, right? The reason why is that, do you know if she sits, it will not break. Well, if she stay for some time, it will bend. And after some time, it will bend. And after some time, it will be like this. Then you will hear, bah. <laughs> Why? But the question is this. Is that not how you put all your life decision on your understanding? And the one that gave you understanding, he knows what he designed. And he told you, please, do not put your whole life decision on your understanding. He says, when you're going to get business partners... He says, I know what you're thinking about, but don't put all your life decision on that understanding. When you're going to get married, don't put all your life decision on that understanding. When you're going to do that proposal, that migration, don't put all your life decision on it. But all of us could look back and be like, you know what, this understanding is strong enough now. After all, it has not broken yet. Let me sit on it. And you know what? This can carry you when you're a child. But as you grow, understanding begins to break down. And no wonder, no wonder. And that's why I used to it because this is what we have used since we were children. We came, every, every child sat on this chair. Now we are older. We don't realize that this chair cannot carry us again. We still want to sit on it. So when you want to do a business decision, understand it. When you want to do a marital decision, understanding. When you want to migrate abroad, understanding. And you're wondering why you are collapsing in life. Because what you are sitting on can no longer carry you. Thank you. Are you here, somebody? So, one of the things that God says is this. He says, he says, do not lean on your understanding. Do not lean on your understanding. The question is this. He wants you to use your understanding, but he doesn't want you to put your total weight in life on your understanding. Then he says something that someone says, well, how can I hear the voice of God? The next time just says, it says, in all your ways do what? And it shall what? What does acknowledge mean? Acknowledge means that recognize he's there and it will show up. Let me show you what acknowledge means. Let, let, me, let, me, let me just say, well, watch this now. Ladies and gentlemen, let's recognize the presence of Pastor Femi George. Please, can you recognize his presence? Question. Was it when I called his name that I got here? Has he been here before? But when I acknowledged him, what happened? He showed up and had preeminence. God says, if you can just acknowledge me about when you want to sign this deal, I will show up. 
So if you want to hear the voice of God, the voice of God is in acknowledging. See, the moment you are in that business room, acknowledge him. You will just see him. Simple thing like, thank you, Holy Spirit. I know you're here. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I know you're here. On the plane, when the plane goes, thank you, Holy Spirit. I know you're here. It's not, you're not calling him to come. He's already there. But in all your ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. So the reason why you've not seen direction is that you've not been what? Acknowledging him. You go, to, you, you go to that office and there's no sales. Thank you, Holy Spirit. He didn't even say, pray to me. Just, Holy Spirit, I know you're here. And he shows you and said, this is how to make sales happen. You know, you're, you're in the marriage and you're your husband. You're having this tough fight and things are really bad. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I know you're here. And it's just there. Oh, this is so good. This is so good. So the question now is this. This is now the question. So, so we've spoken about this. That how can we... So the foundation is this. We should not put our decision based on our own understanding. And in all our ways, we should acknowledge him. Then he says he will direct our parts. So how can I hear the voice of God? So the first thing about hearing the voice of God is this. I understand that God does not talk to my feelings because feeling is what? The language of what? Of the body. Reasoning is the language of what? Of the soul. What language of the spirit? Revelation. And how does God speak to us? By revelation. Does God speak to our feeling? No. The reason why is that John 4.24 God is spirit, and they that must what interact with him must be spiritual. So God is spirit. iPhone connects with iPhone. Android connects with Android. You can download Apple, um, what do you call it, apps on what? Android phone. You can download Android apps on Apple phone. If God is spirit, he's going to communicate to you what? Spirit. The, so why don't we hear God? People don't hear God because they want a spiritual God to communicate to their senses. So, should I push it? So, so they say, I want to feel it. God says, you don't feel me. You discern me. That was why when Elijah was in the place, the Bible says, Elijah here, he says, there was a burning, a rock, a sound. He says, but the Lord was not in it because it was just feeling but Elijah knew there can be noise and God is not in it he said but there came a still small voice the Bible says he took his mantle and wrapped it apart he said because the Lord was in it the Lord was not in the noise see the major problem is this when it comes to hearing God we are looking for dramatic things to happen guy and successful guy you know one you know there's a way we know the will of god once they are kind of close to the pastors and move around church a lot then you know that they're they're christians <laughs> you know it called it was possible and uh this guy was you know and, and this lady they were just going and the lady just felt this way just said every time he asks me out and want to proceed i just find kind of struggle to say yes and then all of friends were like are you crazy this guy's a nice guy and this guy is this and this guy is that and like, ah. You know, you know, you know how girls go crazy sometimes, you know, and that was wonderful. But she felt that this is actually was like, you know what, let's do something different. Let's take our time and just to fast and pray. And it says, in this period, I will not talk to you. So I said, why are you not going to talk to me? The reason why is that you cannot be emotionally involved and hear God distinctively. Emotion clouds spiritual judgment, write it somewhere. Emotion clouds spiritual. That's the same reason doctors don't treat their children. 
even in the natural, there are laws that doctors don't treat their children because emotion what clouds spiritual judgment. That's why sometimes you hear some respectable pastors just preach that someone become governor, become president. And if you look at it, those people are close to them and they not make a mistake. And the reason why is that, you know, with all of the closeness and all of those things, they cannot even tell if God is talking or God is not talking, that kind of thing. It's not as if they're a false prophet. The emotion have just gotten in the way of what? Of the discernment. So the, they, they, they pulled up. And that's why, hey, single people, be don't be praying if it's the will of God when you're falling in love. Too late. Praise the will of God before you fall in love. So once I had a dream. In the dream, I was running, running. I was tired. I just saw her appear from nowhere and give me a cup of water and says, I am your helper. I wish you all the best. Just know what the Bible says. A dream can call through what multitude of business of the day. It's when you have submitted your PR that is in the Canadian embassy. You don't say you are fasting and praying to know the will of God. You are deceiving yourself. Before you submitted, you didn't know the will of God. You have put 20 million in the bank to keep it there so I to be breathing here. You didn't know the will of God. It's when you have submitted you are not paying the bill of God. What will God not tell you? That they, you, they should go and wait money for the bank. Oh, you've not, got the, you've not gotten the PR. You're not saying, Father, is it your will that should travel? With the PR in your hand. You are going to travel. It's not a matter of the will of God. You are going. Ah, <laughs> when the PR is in your hand. You are going. There's a path you take, you will not hear God. The moment Balaam told, and I'm going to teach again about this. The moment Balaam told those guys, he said, stay. Let me ask God again if I should go with you. He was going to go. Uh, God told you yesterday, don't go. Those guys came again today. He said, will you follow us? We'll give you money. He said, stay. Let me ask God. Does God change his mind? Is it never that it's off and on? The reason why he was going to ask God again is this. By the time he saw the money. Hey. Hey. When they opened the briefcase and they saw dollars and pounds, he said, Let me pray. He said, This thing is sufficient seed. If God does not agree, we'll sow a seed. <laughs> if God does not agree, we we'll sow a seed to convince him. Ah, so someone wants to marry the same person, he said, I will we'll change him. If you have power to change people, I have a list. President Buhari. <laughs> B, because I don't have the power to change somebody. So you that have the power, I have a list for you. The head of Boko Haram. Head of Al-Qaeda. I just will export you to them. And you change them from them, we'll bring you back. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. So eventually, they stayed apart for some months. And um, she prayed and found it was not what God wanted her to do. And, and sometimes, watch this now. Oh, I love fourth service. Because a lot gets to come out of my spirit. One thing you must notice is this. Sometimes revelation is progressive. Let me show you. Isaiah chapter 28 verse 13. Why am I saying this to you? Some of you wonder, I, I'm going to, sometimes you must realize that the way God speaks is what progressive. It's, it's just one thing, then another one will come, then another one will come. It's not as if it comes in a textbook format sometimes. See what the Bible says. See what it says. Let's read what to go. The word of the Lord was unto them. What? What's the next thing? Then what? Line upon line. Then what? Then what? Uh huh. Did you see that? He said, How does the word of God come? He says, It's here a little. It's there a little. It's there a little. It's, it's a progressive thing. So sometimes you, the challenge is this many people are too in a hurry. So they go with little instruction and think it's all the instruction. 
And that's why I say, when it comes to hearing the will of God and hearing the voice of God, hurry is never, is never what? Hurry or impatience is never to your advantage. Nobody misses something by being patient. Oh, yeah. Revelation is progressive. There's only one word you heard. You didn't hear the next one. So eventually, the lady, you know, they put apart. Three months after they put apart, it was about like one year. A new, news flash just came out. Oh, the guy's an homosexual. His parents are pressuring him. He doesn't want them to know that he's homosexual. And so, therefore, he was going to marry someone to cover up. And that would have just been a terrible marriage. Can you believe that? But on the outside, hey, Pastor Femi knows him. Oh, Pastor, Pastor Stacy knows him. Hey, hey, they all know him in church. They did it. But it says, God says, man looks on the outside. I look on the inside. So, how do you hear the voice of God? You must know that God reveals. God reveals things to your spirit. So, God reveals things to your spirit. So, the, the way to hear the voice of God is number one, by trusting God. So, question. Let me give you a question. The reason why some people have never heard the voice of God is this. They find it difficult to trust God in certain areas. Leave, can, can I be honest? A lot of single people, when it comes to marriage, especially ladies, to trust God is very difficult. And the reason why is that maybe the age and all of those kind of things. So, as soon as someone shows up, they don't even pray. Because they know what God will say. Because the person has not even passed the word mark before you tell Revelation mark. He has not passed. I'm not praying. No. Let's take him as he is. From here, God will fix him. We will continue. We will be praying him. We will, we will push him until he enters the kingdom. You know why they do that? Because deep down in the heart, they feel as if, if this goes, can any better thing come? And that's why I said the trust. It, it's a trust issue. The trust is that if I don't go to the U.S. now, can I make it to Nigeria? <laughs> trust. You know what trust is? Trust is that, Lord, you see my future. You know my path. Whatever you choose, is what is right for me. And I will stay with it. You know, just in between the service, we had one of our other pastors, not even those ones that came. Pastor Ron, he came in, you know, from, the, from Bagada Church. They've been in the UK for five years right now. And I said, Pastor Ron, remember I told you 10 years ago, I said, I said a broad line fits you. He said, Pastor B, you are so right. It took me to get abroad for me to know. But there's some people that say they want to travel, I don't think so. And they're like, oh, they don't want me to leave the church. I said, Pastor, well, well, if, you don't, if you leave, who we'll notice you're absent? It's the truth. Because, I mean, not that we don't know to have sense, but it's not, that's not the reason I want to, it's like, is this the will of God for you to be there? <laughs> I remember when my sister told me that she wanted to get me a PR, my sister lived in a foreign country. I, I said, no, no, just for me to have, for the children. I said, I didn't want to have. Because it's how you have now, you'll be going frequently. From point where that you get an apartment. From getting an apartment, your children will move. Your children, your, your wife will move. Then you also you will move. Then it's of you to be led by the spirit, to be led by visa. And led by PR and green card. Am I saying you should not travel? There are some people until they travel, their destiny cannot take off. But make sure you are one of them before you travel. And some people until they come back home, they can't do well. God, say listen to me. Some people, when Joseph was born, God told Joseph, carry the baby, go to Egypt. When there was famine, he told Isaac, stay where you are. He said, the, so the question that, which one are you? Are you Joseph that must go to Egypt? Or are you Isaac that must stay where you are? They don't write it on face. Neither does look, look, you must discern by the spirit. That's why you're learning this. Glory to God. I said glory to God. So how, so how do you hear the voice of God? Number one, by really trusting him. Number two, by knowing he speaks to your spirit. And the third way is this. Just realizing that the leading of the Holy Spirit has to be taught for you to experience it. Someone says, why is God not speaking to me? You have to learn it, sir. 
That's why when you read someone like Elijah, Elijah had what they call the school of the prophet. What were they doing there? They were learning the things of the spirits. Did you notice when God called Samuel, what happened? Samuel ran to Elijah. Um, to, to, um, Samuel ran to Eli. He ran, he ran, he ran, he ran. He said, hey, master, why didn't God say, hey, I'm the one calling you? No. Until you are taught the leading, you cannot discern it. So, he called the second time. He, God did just say, oh boy, stop, look up. No. It was when Eli now said, hey, hold on. I can sense something. Eli now taught him how to respond. That was not when he heard the voice of God. Listen, spiritual guide us. And that's why when you lead like a team, a group, you must intentionally teach these things. Glory to God. For example, what, what, some of you don't understand that when you pray, God can use anything to answer you. You can pray about something, Lord, I want to do something. Z, 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 z. Hey, man. Next thing you go for a meeting in an office, you just pick up a magazine, open, bam, and the page you open is the answer to your prayer. <laughs> Many of you are still waiting and God will say, oh, my God, he got oh, blah, blah, blah. So in, you're, you're expecting your answer to prayer in church. Meanwhile, the magazine was the answer. I, I was sharing to them in the other service. I said, when my church was, when my first born was going to go to secondary school, we were really thinking about it and praying about it. And my wife was like, because I went to boarding school, so I thought it was a great idea. And my wife also wanted to go to boarding school. I was like, maybe we should be outside the country, within the country. We're thinking all those things. Then I said, okay, let me just go and pray about it. And then I just pray about it. Just down the road, five minutes from here, I want to say, Pastor, he had come from the U.S. and he's 60 years old. All his kids are doing well, know the Lord. And he just told me, we're just talking, we're talking about prayer, church planting, church growth. He just said, imagine. Eh? Some people just take their young child and put it in the boarding school. What kind of behavior is that? Do you know that's not the will of God? I just said. <laughs> just imagine, we're talking about, eh, if you plant this church, what makes this? We're talking about, just, just imagine. He said, let me say something to you. Do you know? And he said, this is the problem. When they are between one and ten, they have the values, but the values are not formed. When you send them to boarding school that way, they put on the school, they, they're friends. Their values can be shattered. Some people survive it. But the values can be shattered. He said, and once the values is shattered, you'll bring new values back home. He said, oh, I don't believe in boarding school. He said, apart from that, if God wanted boarding school, you should have put in, you should have let us know you wanted boarding school. When he said that, he said, what am I even saying this? Hey, let's go back to our talk. Hey, wait. See, see prophetic conversation. Till tomorrow, that guy does not know that prophet or man does not influence me. But ahead. There's a guy I know, he's an actor, has a smoking addiction. When God was, he attends his church, when God was going to deliver him, early in the morning, he him, he went to smoke. He went to buy cigarettes. He's a director, not an actor. He went to buy cigarettes. As he walked past a madman, the madman was smoking. The madman looked at him and said, you're a madman. How can someone at 7 a.m. be smoking? He said, you are very mad. He said, the cigarette dropped from his hand. He said, they knew they are not normal. He said, that was the last the cigarette touched his mouth. You know the thing? Someone else would have said that and walked away and not realized that the madman had become a place. Someone said, can God talk to madman? You don't understand. God spoke to donkey. God spoke to donkey. Someone will just tell you something and tell you, you better be patient with your wife. And you will not know. Let me tell you. Someone say, how do you know if it's the word of God that is coming to you? It's two signs. There are many signs, but just two I should give you. Just because of time. First of all, the Bible says the word of God is fire. Yes or no? Once God's word comes to you, it has a burning effect. Uh, it, it, will, it will just kind of eat you up from the inside. It burns you. You're like, ah, why do you feel this way? As I'm talking to you, some of you feel it, you on your seat, you are just parabolating. You just mm, because the word is entering. Let me show you in the Bible. Luke chapter 24. Because before what you think I'm making all this thing up. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Oh, that's weak now. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. Luke 24. Let's read from verse 40. Verse 32. The Bible says this, and they said to one another, Did our hearts not what? 
this was, they didn't know what Jesus Christ was talking to them. So they had a conversation. But as soon as they knew, the Bible said it disappeared. So when he was talking to them, something was happening inside. He says it, and they said to one another, when they had disappeared, he says, did our heart not burn within us while he talked to us by the way and opened to us the scripture? He was saying that as he was talking, there was this boar, there was this thing in it. We, we knew why the word of God is fire. So it has an effect. As I'm speaking right now, I just say, ah, this thing pastor said about partnership. There was a way it just hit me. That's the next one. Oh. Because the way to hit you, that hit is another dimension. The word of God is a hammer. So we we'll just be in the service, people are laughing, you know, and you cannot find what to laugh about. about what said. Because as people found it funny, it was as if they took dagger. Boah! On your heart. And you just, you just, and you wonder what's funny. What about found it funny? But because the word is specific to you, it has the hammer effect. Then when it finishes hitting you, you know what happens? When you stand up, you will not feel the weight because hammer is very heavy. The word is weighty. You will feel it's very weighty. You will just feel the weightiness of the word. Like some of you have to forgive right now. Mm, did you feel the hammer? Yeah. I, I saw the faces now. Don't have anybody. Mm. <laughs> I saw the response. Here. Yeah. <laughs> My God, I have to forgive. That is a harm of God. And you know, because it's waiting, everywhere you go, there's that weight of the word that you can. For example, have you noticed every time some of you are here, once I say, praise the Lord, it's time to give our tithe and offering. There's a way your face will just shrink. In our church, either you give or not, there's no register. Why are you feeling, why are you feeling that way? Is the weightiness of the word. Because that's something God has been dealing with you about. That you have not done. So when the reminder comes, the hammer effect lands you again. Bosa! You experience disruption. You now just well. If I don't get it, I'll give next week. God knows I don't have anything. Let's go. Someone say hallelujah. Someone say hallelujah. Are, are, you, are, are you feeling how God works? So spiritual, and that's why I said spiritual guidance has to be what taught. Because, see, when we, when we teach you spiritual things, everybody look up here, please. The truth is that we're not teaching you. You know those things intrinsically. But what I'm doing is to put words to the experiences you have personally. Is it not true? This lady was here when I want to say, yes, yes, yes. He said, yeah, he paused. Because she has experienced it before. I mean, I've experienced the hammer before. Wave up, you don't be shy. You've had, yeah? See, you've, it's, it's not so, so it's not something that listen, you've experienced. I've never experienced fire before. Ah, it, it's not, that's it. You, it's dimensions of the word. So, what a great Bible teacher does is this listen to me, the Holy Spirit is working in you. What a great Bible teacher is to help you put labels, words, and names to the activities of the Spirit that is already happening in your life. So that now that when you put it there, you can now recognize it when they happen and understand the patterns of the spirits. Glory to God. I said glory to God. I said glory to God. I said glory to God. Let's close this service by speaking about two major concepts as we close. Which is... Um, I mean, I'm going to clarify this more in the future. Which is, if God speaks to our spirit, then if God speaks to your spirit, and your spirit is going to hear the voice of God, then you must develop your spirit to be able to what? Hear the voice of God. You must what? Develop your spirit to be able to what? Hear the voice of God. Let, let me give an example. Where, where, where is... Um, um, where is that blood pressure machine? Do you have it? Thank you. L let me call someone quickly that we can use it on. Have you used this machine before? By yourself or someone used it for you? By yourself. Okay, I also have not used it before. Uh, have you used this before? No? Oh, yeah, come, come, come. Yeah. Thank you. Where's the stethoscope? Yeah. 
So this is the first problem. Let's look at the first problem. When you don't know how God speaks to you, you use the wrong gadget. So, many of you want to hear God, you say, Father, speak, Lord, speak, Lord, as if he will speak to this year. <laughs> see, what, have you never when you are praying, you now keep quiet for God to talk to you. Nonsense. <laughs> you see, you keep quiet. If, I, you are making noise. God needs to talk now. Shh. See? Some people are saying, be still and know I am the Lord. Be still. Say, speak, Lord, thy servant listeneth. Speak, Lord. Thy... Because, because all this concept is the fact that you think God is going to speak into your what? Your ears. See, you don't understand. This is why you don't need to be quiet for God to speak to you. As you're praying with your mouth, God is speaking to your heart. Because he speaks from the inside, not from the ears. This, this, this is what it looks like. You know, this is the problem. This is why people don't hear God. Because, you know, doctor says step for blood pressure, sends to the nurse, I'm the nurse. I want to test for blood pressure. I bring out the stethoscope and I say, how am I going to be testing you? Is this the instrument to test for blood pressure? Foul, foul, foul. Foul. So, when you want to hear God from your ear, foul, foul, foul. Because the instrument is wrong. You say, Father, you know, how do you know the will of God? The way I just feel when I see him. Mm. Mm. Akika. Praise God. <laughs> <laughs> what I just said, just say, I feel. You better tell us what you feel. Glory to God. You are married. You say, I bet people say, my wife is a witch. How do you know? He said, I know them. He said, when I say witch, I can see. Oh, you can see a witch with a natural eye. You must be a witch. Because the Bible says the things of the spirit cannot be discerned by the senses. So for you to discern spiritual things by the senses, you must be something in the spiritual. One day I slept. Don't tell my wife I told you this. <laughs> I want to laugh first. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> oh God. I said, Judge, you don't believe this. I just let her woke up. I saw my wife's legs on the wall. <laughs> oh. <laughs> the first thought that came to my mind. <laughs> if you don't get the joke, forget it. <laughs> Praise God. Except when, if we're younger and you watch all this Father Yololo, you know, you know, all those, all those kind of movies, all those Agbarala, you know, you want those kind of movies, all those things as his interpretation. I just saw my wife. The next day, ah, she has got to be tea. See? Oh my God! She eventually woke up. I'm like, oh, why did you sleep like that? I said, oh wow, that you know I did an exercise. My back was paining me, so I want to lean my legs to the wall so that that was the only way I can be paid. So that I don't be there. Because all these signs that you can see, which yeah, 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 spiritual things cannot be discerned by the eyes. That's why most of you, who you call a witch is your mother, they just discern your family. Can you see which by me or your eye? <laughs> you can see. Look in the Bible. People that were demon possessed, they people that never were demon. People that lived with them don't they demon possessed. Did you read Mary? The Bible says Mary Magdalene in womb it cast out what seven evil spirits. If you saw her, she was the one that had perfume that poured on the head of Jesus Christ. So. <laughs> Our Instagram following was two point five million. All of you were following demon possessed person. You didn't know. And the reason why I'm saying so is this. So, you want to check blood pressure, you want to check this, and you're using the wrong, you're using the wrong instrument. Because you're really, see, this is the thing. The things of the spirit cannot be discerned by the senses. And just for you to know, can I shock you? There's no spiritual gift called the gift of what? Huh? Huh? There's no spiritual gift in the Bible called the gift of discernment. 
What the Bible talks about is the discerning of spirits. And what people that say they have the gift of discernment, what they have is the gift of suspicion, which is not a gift. What the Bible call, talked about is what is the discerning of what spirit, not the gift of what discernment. And have you noticed people that have the gift of discernment, they always discern demons. Discern demons. In your village, what will you see an angel? She is the same eyes you used to see angel, you used to see God. And you see, you've not seen angel before. Only demon, or one spirit, man, what that spirit. You know all of them. You know their color. Praise God. Hallelujah. This is so good. So guess what? If I want to, so if I want to check his blood pressure right now, if, so I bought the black blood, I bought the right blood pressure machine. I say, okay, so use it. Yeah, set it up for yourself. Keep trying. <laughs> I'm enjoying it. <laughs> I should hold this for you. Okay, I'll hold it. It's okay. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> Even with help, you're getting it wrong. So it's okay. Because you want to put this. You want to, okay. Yeah. With a cable inside the. Oh, that's good. Mm. I want to ask you a question. Do you think this this okay okay so do what you want to do again? What do you want to you want to put it here? Okay, yeah, I'll help you. Okay. You want to put it here? Oh, I'll, I'll give you some help. Thanks. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, exactly. Oh, don't don't let's fold it. Let's make it straight. Yeah, yeah, that's good. That's good. Yeah, we have it. Yeah. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So you fixed it now? Yeah, yeah, I got it. Yeah. Well, okay, you want to apply it like this. This is the way you want to apply it. Maybe it's upside down. Maybe it's upside down. But it was upside down before you changed upside down again. The question I'm saying to you is this. If this is your spirit that should know the measurements of your heart, if you don't know how to use the gadget, you still will not get the reading. Because many of you think God is not talking. The point is that you've not just developed yourself in the use of your spiritual gifts. To be able to develop the leading. If I call someone that uses it regularly, within the next one or two minutes, they will set it up, they will press it, it's going to read. And you know when it even reads, it's going to read something like 140 verse over 80. And if you're not trained, when it's 140 by 80, it's a number. Isn't it a number? It's a number. It's only trained people that can tell you that this is what the number means. What does that mean? As a spiritual person, you can get numbers in the spirit, quotes in the spirit. But if you don't know what it means by teaching, you still don't know what to do. And you wonder, God is not talking to me. Meanwhile, he has told you a lot. That's why he said, we as blind and my servant, see many things and yet cannot see. All the quotes and patterns are there. The eyes cannot see what he's saying. Because he has not been taught how to see. Thank you. Thank you, sir. First of all, my counsel to you, go on YouTube. I have about 20 or 30 messages on divine guidance. Get it. Three areas you must be very careful. When it comes to money, when it comes to marriage, when it comes to education. Those three areas, be very careful. Because those are destiny pillars. When you shake them, did you watch that video by Pastor Debe? What Pastor Debe said? If you marry a wrong woman, it will take the almighty God <laughs> Same thing for the wrong man. Praise God. I said, Praise God. I said, Praise God. 
So, what, so let's begin to round up. So one of the things that happens is that prayer produces, prayer provokes, prayer makes your descent, your discernment sharper, your, your, your sensitivity makes it sharper in the spirit if you're prayerful. That's what happens. So the last thing is this. Let's talk, you know, maybe I will just do this next week. So let, let's just say something quickly here. Let's just say something quickly here. Matthew chapter 16, uh, Matthew chapter 16, verse... Verse 14. Matthew chapter 16, verse 14. Matthew chapter 16, verse 14. So what the Bible says? Bible says here, Bible says, sorry, Mark chapter 16, verse 14. Not Matthew. Mark chapter 16, verse 14. The Bible says, after he appeared unto the eleven, he sat down with them and unbreathed them with their unbelief and the what hardness of their heart. So, why don't people hear God? The reason why don't we hear God is unbelief and what the hardness of heart. What do I mean? There are people that God speaks to, but they don't believe it's God speaking to them. They keep saying something told me, and the more you say something told me, the more you lose it, because you must give glory to God. Proverbs Romans chapter one says, "People that have the glory of God and set to an image." Did you see what he said? So every time God says something to you, oh, God spoke to me. So you must be able to believe that it was God that spoke to you. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. There's something I don't want to share, but I just feel the need to go back and share it and go back and share it. I, I, I want to talk about, let, let, just give it to First Acts chapter 5, 7 verse 51. Acts 7 verse 51 and First Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 19. And I'm going to close. Acts 7 51. Yeah, because I'm, I plan to share this later. Acts 751, see what the Bible says. See what the Bible says. Because I want to show you something about leading. This is why people don't hear the voice of the Holy Spirit. This is why. Because they consistently ignore it. I want to say something. All of you, let me ask a question. Is there any place you live or pass through that has a big dustbin that is very disgusting to the sight and smells? You pass through it regularly. Wave your hands, let me see. Good. I want to ask you something. Have you stopped smelling it and stopped seeing it eventually? Yes or no? But you used to pass through that place, but you don't see it again. The reason why is that every time you saw it and you avoided it, you saw it, you avoided it, your brain created a pattern that she doesn't want to see this. So your brain by itself, make sure you stop noticing it and stop smelling it. What does that mean? When the Holy Spirit leads you and you consistently don't obey, your brain will tell you she doesn't respond to things like this. Don't recognize it again. Do you understand what I'm saying? It will tell you she or he does not respond to things like this. Don't what? Recognize it again. And that's why some of you, you are in a position where your heart is hard. Look at what the Bible says here. Yes, stiff naked and unsecoming heart. You do always resist. See the problem. How did they become stiff necked? How did they become uncircumcised? He says, the reason why is this. You do always what? Resist the Holy Ghost. What resist the Holy Ghost? Come, 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 come. This resist the Holy Ghost. What this re, the resist the Holy Ghost is an active fight. You pull him, you pull him. You, it's an active fight. What does who comes to mind? Jonah. God told Jonah, go to Nineveh. You know why God Jonah went to Tashish? You know why Tashish is? Tashish is in the opposite direction of Nineveh. It was a resistance. God told you to slow down in the marriage. You say, that's when you bought engagement ring. Why? You want to get to a point where you cannot return. Because you don't want to hear. When you live like that, my prayer is this for you. May God not leave it to yourself. May God not say, you know what? She be as smart. Do it. And many people on the edge, I'm telling you, many people on the edge. And the challenge is this resistance. Look at Cain. The Bible says, when Cain gave an offering and God rejected it, God told Cain, if you had done well, what does that mean? Cain knew what well was. He just did not do it. He resisted the Spirit. God says, give, make sure that you pay your title, give an offering. That was the day you remember that you have not bought the MTN shares you want to buy. Quickly buy it. So when God says it again, say, God, I will have done it too, but I don't have the money. But you've heard the voice that this is what you should do. That's what resists the spirit. 
as the guy is coming to you, coming to you, your boy says, this is not your husband, though. Next thing, as he just said, so you just amplify efforts. Resisting is an active way of going against what the Spirit is saying. That's what's quenching. Let's explain quenching. First thing, chapter 5, verse 19. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 19. What is quenching? First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 19. What is quenching? Look at it. It's a quench of the spirit. Quenching is not resisting. Quenching is suppressing by ignoring. You will behave as if we didn't hear. You will behave as if what? You didn't hear. You know what God is saying, no? You just behave as if is it me that talking to? I'm waiting so that the hammer can hit. Yeah. But I'm telling you, join workforce. Forgive your mother in law. Forgive your mom. Forgive your dad. You just behave. In, you know it's you because you felt the hammer. Boah! He just, mm. You are not fighting it. You are just what? Ignoring it. Let me give you a good example. Look, look at Esther. Mordecai told Esther, see what they have done. Esther said, I beg you. Just leave me. She did not oppose it. I will pray for you. But leave me out of it. She ignored it. Ah, Mordecai said, let me tell you something. He said, this is destiny calling. If not for Mordecai, Esther will have missed her destiny. Do you know, if not for Mordecai, Esther's name will not be in the Bible. Because she was about to quench it. She was about to what? Quench. I want to give you an example. I, have you noticed, this quenching is very powerful. Have you noticed that sometimes you want to pray, and the prayer starts going up, but you don't want to pray that way. What You will come down. You have to see in church. I said, what's your name? I know. Oh, you just want guys to look at you. I mean, it's the guy that you like. You know. Yeah. <laughs> what is in my spirit? I can't say to you. Ah, it's in my vernacular. It's not a good thing to say. Ah, it's not a good thing. It's not a good thing. It's, not, it's, it's what my mother used to say. It's not a good thing. I can quote her, but I can't say it. I should quote her. <laughs> my mother would say, Oh, Bono, I hear that. I'm telling you. Yeah, before God, a spiritual moment. He says, what is looking at you? He has never asked you out. Are you sure he's not looking at the next person? And you just quench it. And you know the thing about quenching? Listen to me, everybody. I want to take this with you. You can't determine when the river will flow. You can't determine how it flows. But when it flows, you jump into it. If you don't jump into it, that's the end. You have to wait for the next flow. That's how we miss that destiny. Because you can't kindle the spirit. But when it comes, that's it. You feel that thing and you want to worship and pray. That thing you say, fast. You want to pray and you want to let go. You say, no, 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 I can't. can't. And you just quench it. That's how we quench the spirit. So they quench by ignoring it or they quench by postponing it. God says, Give, start this now with the seed. Oh yeah, we'll do that tomorrow next week. In your heart, eventually you will not, because you will postpone it until the time that that voice loses what? Strength to you. So eventually, you don't do it. Ah, my Isaac offering. Ah, no, 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 I'll give it. End of February. End of February. Yeah, I just felt some hammers just hit that right there. So I will give it. End of February. <sighs> This month is tight. Next month, and you begin to quench until she be that is also we're in the new season. Praise God! God is good and kind. Quench not the spirit. Let it flow. Let's pray. It's a prayer of repentance for those I've been quenching, for those of us I've been resisting, because me I was resisting also. But Lord, please forgive us. Let's stop and pray.